Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is True Crime Caitlin and I'm so glad you've joined me today for a little true crime chat and my first ever upload. So for today's case I've decided to cover probably one of the most requested cases over on my TikTok account. So today we're going to talk about the devastating murder of Tia Sharp. On the 30th of June 2000, Natalie Sharp and Stephen Carter welcomed their beautiful baby girl into the world, Tia Christine Sharp. Tia was born and grew up in Croydon, London. When Tia was two years old, that was when she was first introduced to her grandmother's boyfriend, Stuart Hazel. They became very close over the years and Tia would grow up calling him Grandad. I just want to give you all a little bit of an insight into Stuart and his background just so you can get a little bit of an idea of what he's like. Stuart's childhood and upbringing was difficult and rocky to say the least. His mother was a sex worker and his dad spent a lot of time in and out of prison and at one point in his childhood Stuart was put into foster care. Stuart was exposed to sex at a very very young age due to his mum's line of work which is unfortunately something that is quite common among sex offenders. He began to drink alcohol very excessively by the time he turned 13. He would skive off school, which meant that his IQ was quite low. And at 16 years old, while he was living in a hospital, he was raped. A psychiatrist he later spoke with named Dr. Nixon said, quote, trauma like this can lead them to using violence as the first response to any challenge they have. Stuart's psychiatric history showed many things including depression, alcoholism, many suicide attempts and self-harm. It was in 2002 when Stuart first met Christine Bicknell, Tia's grandmother. He met her while she was working as a barmaid in Rains Park. That year, however, he was arrested for racially aggravated common assault. And then in 2003, he actually spent 34 months in prison for supplying cocaine. It wasn't until 2007 that Stuart and Christine became a romantic couple. He moved into Christine's home with her, which was in New Addington, South London. Stuart had issues with drug abuse and in 2010, he was convicted again for carrying a machete. Christine stood by him through all of this and she even went as far as to tell the police that he wasn't aggressive or anything like that at home. By this time, Stuart had racked up quite the record with police. He had a total of 30 previous convictions and had been to prison three times. Tia was a happy, confident, well-liked, smart girl. She attended secondary school, although her attendance was a little bit on the lower side. Sometime in 2008, social services became concerned over Natalie and Stephen's cannabis use. Their house was searched three separate times for drugs. On one of the occasions, Tia was present and drugs was found on that day. However, it was noted that there was no signs of neglect or abuse towards Tia or her two younger brothers. On the 2nd of August, 2012, Tia asked her mom if she could have a sleepover at her grandma and granddad's house. Natalie texted Stuart and asked if this was okay. He replied saying that it was fine, but Christine wouldn't be there that night. Natalie told Tia this and she was still happy and excited to go and spend time with her granddad. Sometime later that night, Christine rang Stuart just to check on them both and see how they were doing. Tia was heard laughing in the background of the phone call and Stuart just told Christine that they were playing games on the computer. The next day when Christine had got home, she found Stuart sat on the couch watching some TV. She asked where Tia was and Stuart explained that Tia had gone out to Croydon, which was five miles away, to buy some new shoes. Christine waited and waited throughout the day for Tia coming back to their house. When it got to 6pm and she still hadn't came back, she rang Natalie and explained the situation to her. Feeling very worried, Christine and Natalie began searching and looking around for Tia, but they had no luck and that is when they decided to call the police. Natalie would later say that she blamed herself for what happened and wishes that she had contacted the police earlier. She had no way of knowing that it was already too late. Police begin to question Stuart naturally as he was the last person a member of the family to see and be with Tia. He explained to the police the story he told Christine that Tia had gone to Croydon to buy some shoes. 
police questioned a neighbour named Paul Meehan who corroborated this story. He said that he saw Tia walk past his window. On the 9th of August, Stewart had an interview with ITV where he denied any involvement with Tia's disappearance. During this interview, he wore a t-shirt which had her face on it and he pleaded for her safe return home. Over the course of the investigation, up to 80 officers were assigned to this case. They received 55 possible sightings of Tia and they obtained up to 800 hours worth of CCTV footage. They also searched Christine's house three times, once with the assistance of police dogs, but none of this led to anything. Early morning on the 10th of August, Stuart left the house. Christine had been noticing a very strong smell in the house over the past few days and it was getting stronger. She spoke to Stuart about this and he blamed it on the cats. So that morning, she spent the morning kind of cleaning, trying to find the source of the smell, where it was coming from, but she couldn't find it. Police showed up to her home on that day for yet another search. They asked Christine to leave while they'd done this. It was on this day, on their fourth search of Christine's house, that they found the decomposing body of 12-year-old Tia Sharp in the loft. Her taped up body was found wrapped in a black bed sheet, then placed inside of a black bag. A person who worked on the case described it as she was kind of cocooned. After finding Tia's body, police needed to find Stuart and fast. The search for Stuart didn't last too long as police received tips from the members of the public about Stuart's whereabouts. At 8.25pm after being found at Cannon Hill Common, Stuart Hazel was arrested on suspicion of murder. Members of public crowded the van that Stuart was in, all trying to get a hold of him and get at him. Christine was also arrested on suspicion of murder. Paul Meehan, the neighbour, was arrested on suspicion of assisting an offender for corroborating Stuart's false story. During questioning, Stuart profusely denied any involvement in Tia's murder. He began to string up a story about that night, all of which was lies. He told police that Tia had had a fall and got back up and that she seemed okay. He then passed out drunk and then when he woke up a few hours later, he found Tia dead. But rather than calling for help or trying to resuscitate Tia or anything like that, he decided to just hide her body. The police obviously didn't believe this story. Tia's post-mortem had begun on the 10th of August and come the 16th, it still wasn't done. I couldn't believe that when I was researching, but due to the really warm weather at the time, it caused Tia's body to decompose rapidly, and this made it very difficult to find a cause of death. Dental records showed that the body did belong to 12-year-old Tia. Tia's post-mortem was finished without an official cause of death being ruled. The prosecution wasn't really happy with this because this makes it a little bit more difficult to pursue a murder case. But despite that, detectives had their own theories about what they think happened. They theorised that Tia was either smothered or suffocated and they also think she could have been sexually assaulted. The reason they believed this was because of stuff that they had found on a memory card which belonged to Stuart in Christine's house. After the arrests, Christine's house was extensively searched. They really went through it with a fine tooth comb and a good job that they did because the memory card I just mentioned was hidden in a door frame. The images and the videos that police recovered from this memory card were deeply disturbing. There was videos ranging from Tia putting on moisturiser, Tia sleeping, all the way up to pictures of her post-mortem placed in sexual positions. On the memory card, there was also videos that Stuart took of himself pleasing himself sexually. Christine and Paul were both released on bail and Stuart was sent to Belmarsh Prison where he was held in isolation. During this time, he wrote many letters to his dad stating his innocence. He would repeat the story to his dad that he told police and he flat out denied any sexual videos or images of Tia being on the memory card. Truly, all that Stuart was concerned about was that his dad didn't view him as a paedophile or a nonce. Dr. Nixon, who is the psychologist involved in this case, said, quote, This is something seen again and again in sex offenders. 
On the 7th of December, the charges against Christine were dropped as it was proved that she had no involvement in the murder. Paul Mahan was sentenced to five months imprisonment for waste and police time. On the 7th of May 2013, Stewart's trial began at the Old Bailey. He entered a plea of not guilty. However, six days into the trial, after forcing Tia's family to listen through all the medical evidence, all the forensic evidence, them having to see some of the photos that he had taken of her which were on the memory card, he decided to change his plea to guilty. Coincidentally, this was just before he was up to take the stand. On the 14th of May 2013, Stuart Hazel is sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum of 38 years to serve. He will be 75 before he is able to apply for release. To this day, Stuart has never fully disclosed how or why he killed Tia. Police theorised that he had had sexual fantasies toward Tia for quite some time and on the night of the 2nd of August, he had tried a sexual advance on Tia. And when she said no, he murdered her either out of embarrassment or that he was scared that Tia would tell someone what he had tried to do. Again, this is just a theory, only Stuart knows what really happened on that night. Stuart is now 47 year old and is serving his sentence in HMP Wakefield. The house where Tia was murdered was demolished in June of 2013 and Tia had a private family funeral on the 14th of September 2012. And that is today's devastating case. Poor, poor Tia was murdered by a man she knew, she trusted, she probably even loved, a man that she called Grandad. None of Tia's family could have seen this coming. Yes, Stuart had been in trouble with police and with the law before, but from going from that up to murdering someone you knew since they were two year old, someone who trusted you, someone you brought up as your own granddaughter, is just unimaginable. And my heart is really with Tia's family. Thank you to you all who have sat and listened and supported me with my first upload. Please don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. I've linked all of my source material in the description box along with all of my socials if you want to follow me on my other platforms as well. I hope that you all have a lovely rest of your day or night or whatever it is where you are. And thank you again and I'll see you all on my next one.